and they would have chip, chipped it into shape. This Qurlaq is one of Alexina Kublu's most sentimental pieces from her childhood. The traditional Inuit oil lamp made of soapstone belonged to her mother. Kublu brought it with her when she spoke to Pope Francis today, telling him that she and her five siblings had attended residential school and how the legacy of those schools damaged not only children, but also parents. I'm going to talk about my mother's Qurlaq because this Qurlaq um, is an epitome of the kulak of all those mothers who, like my mother, would just sit, at times just sit there, just staring at the flame. Kublu joined about a hundred people, including survivors, inside Nekasuk School for a private meeting with Pope Francis. Various Inuit artists then performed for the Pope before he addressed the thousands who came out for this historic visit on Inuit Nunangat to hear him say sorry in Inuktitut. I am grateful for this opportunity to be here in Nunavut within Inuit Nunangat. You have come to love these places, to respect, cherish and enhance them passing on from generation to generation such basic values as respect for the elderly, genuine fraternity, and care for the environment. Tanya Tungilik's late father, Marius Tungilik, was forced to go to residential school. She met with the Pope on his behalf. He would have wanted justice. He would have wanted the, the Pope to apologize for the the church's role in the residential schools and for hiding the, the clergy, knowing what they had done. Pope Francis was given a traditional Inuit drum by a survivor. His stop in Iqaluit lasted only a few hours, but many here hope that in the spirit of reconciliation, there will be action. Hopefully opening up the beginning of something. It's not the end, this is the beginning of hopefully helping our people to fully recover from the horrific. So Juanita, the Pope um, heard from survivors today about a very specific case, a fugitive oblate priest who is accused of sexually assaulting uh, little ones in, in the 60s and 70s. What more can you tell us about that? That's right, Adrienne Tanya Tungalik, who you saw in our piece. Mm -hmm. Her father was an alleged victim of that priest, Johannes Rivor. And actually, he was the first to raise the alarm that uh, Rivor had these alleged crimes going on. Now, Rivor is 92 years old. Mm -hmm. He lives in France currently. And this week, the Canadian government announced that they have asked that he be extradited to Canada to face justice. But that is unlikely to happen because there is no extradition treaty. Now, today, survivor Peter Ilnik also asked that the Pope intervene and press for Rivor's return to Canada. As well, Adrian, Inuit Tepari Kanatami President Natan Obed, he made the same appeal last March in Rome. All right, we'll keep watching this. Uh, Juanita, thanks to you and your team for all your work on You're this. You're welcome. Uh, as always.